oh my God, I cannot believe we did what we did. Um, but we did. It's all there. It's all there. This is a real story of a real fraud. That's the lowest point in my career that I went along with that paper. Deliberate, high-level deception of the American people with disastrous consequences for its children's health. In order to give context to the extraordinary story that you're about to hear, a little historical perspective is important. Many of you will have heard of Tuskegee. Dirt poor sharecroppers in Macon County, Alabama. Black men with syphilis. From 1932, 339 men were told by the Public Health Service, the forerunner of today's CDC, that they had bad blood. The motive of public health doctors was to study the natural history of syphilis in the black man. Natural history in this case means deliberately untreated. These men were deliberately left untreated even when something as effective as penicillin came along. Worse still, those infected were actively prevented by public health doctors from getting this life-saving drug. Men suffered and died, women continued being infected, and babies continued to be born with congenital syphilis. A shiny new CDC took over in the late 1960s, refused to stop the experiment. Not until every last man had been opened up on their autopsy table. The experiment was stopped, not because the CDC realized the barbaric nature of their enterprise, but because a whistleblower by the name of Peter Buxton leaked the story to a journalist at the Washington Star. The story was published on July 25th, 1972, hit the front page of the New York Times, and the experiment was stopped shortly thereafter. Congressional hearings followed. So unethical, so inhumane was this public health experiment that it led to a change in the CDC's code of medical ethics. Except it didn't. Thirty years later, the CDC was to do something arguably far worse. Over a decade ago, Dr. Scott Montgomery and I put forward a hypothesis for MMR vaccine and autism. The age that you receive the vaccine influences the risk. This makes sense. For some infections like measles, the age of infection changes the outcome. We shared this hypothesis with vaccine officials, members of the Centers for Disease Control at meetings in Washington, D.C., and Cold Spring Harbor. A group of senior vaccine safety people at the CDC studied it. It panned out. We were right. At least partly. By November the 9th, 2001, nearly 13 years ago, senior CDC scientists knew that younger age of exposure to MMR was associated with an increased risk of autism. In 2004, they published but they hid the results. That's the lowest point in my career that I went along with that paper. And uh, I went along with this. We didn't report significant findings. MMR was declared safe. The IOM has evaluated this issue um, back in 2004 and again most recently in 2011. Um, and, you know, their conclusion, again, it was not just looking at the work that was done at CDC, but with the total body of evidence, was suggesting that um, vaccines and their components did not increase the risk okay. for that, autism. That. What Dr. Colleen Boyle, a co-author of that blighted paper, did not tell Congress, is that she and her colleagues had deliberately concealed the autism vaccine link from the Institute of Medicine and the public. Ironically, they even received an award from the Secretary of Health and Human Services for this work. So troubling was the fraud that one of the CDC researchers broke ranks. Eventually, he made contact with Dr. Brian Hooker, father of a vaccine-injured child with autism and a vaccine safety researcher. Uh, I received a phone call out of the blue. Uh, it had a 404 area code. So I knew it was from the CDC. Lo and behold, it was He had much to confess. I'm completely 
completely ashamed of what I did. I have great shame now. I was complicit, and uh, I went along with this. Had appointed me his priest. And when he appointed me his priest, then he started confessing. And we have had many, many phone exchanges. We've exchanged dozens of emails, and he has released quite compelling information regarding fraud and malfeasance in the CDC. We didn't report significant findings. Sent Hooker information that was never intended for public scrutiny. From their own data sheets dated 2001, Dr. Hooker analyzed the CDC's results, and he found the same risk for autism that the CDC scientists had themselves identified. It's all there. It's all there. He confronted. He has expressed significant remorse for lying, for bearing data. I have great shame now when I meet families with kids with autism because I've I have been part of the problem. This week, August the 10th, 2014, Dr. Hooker published the real findings. A 340% increased risk of autism in boys receiving the MMR on time compared with those receiving it later. 13 years and tens of thousands of children later. But as I've said, Dr. Montgomery and I were only partly right. The risk of autism from early MMR vaccination was seen in black children, black boys. Those boys, for some reason, are at very high risk. Consistent with the CDC's own findings, the rate of autistic regression in black children is reported to be twice that in white children. Oh my God, I cannot believe we did what we did. Tuskegee Revisited. Scientist Dr. David Lewis, an international expert in whistleblowing and the detection of scientific fraud, reviewed the original CDC documents and the paper they published in 2004. Probably this is the clearest case and the easiest case in which to answer, is it fraud or is it an accident? Is it just an artifact of the study uh, that we're dealing with here? Clearly it's fraud. He knows that he's culpable for damage. He knows that he's culpable for permanent damage of a large, significant portion of the population in the United States. The higher-ups wanted to do certain things, and I went along with it. Dr. Frank Stefano, Dr. Marshallin Jürgen Alsop, Dr. Colleen Boyle. They knew. They let it happen, and they could have stopped it. Michigan lawyer Alison Folmar, an award-winning advocate for children, and parental rights gave her reaction. Um, I feel uh, first and foremost as a human being, you know, uh, betrayed. When you lose your faith and trust in humanity, you know, how, how do you how do you repair that? I mean, I don't really know what to say, to be honest. He is very regretful about his involvement. What's the lowest point in my career that I went along with that paper? I'm not going to lie. Um, I've, I basically have stopped lying. You see, vile as the crimes of Stalin, Pol Pot, and Hitler were, these men were not hypocrites. Their motives ambiguous or their rhetoric glazed with apparent caring and compassion. These men were not entrusted with the welfare of their victims. Their mottos did not include the words to save lives and protect. They were not running a mandatory program disguised as caring. How many children? How many went to the wall in that decade of silence? How many presidents, Mr. Obama? 